Winning time opens on Jerry Buss, a real estate mogul interested in purchasing the Los Angeles Lakers. Buss is stretching himself very thin to make this purchase, and the Lakers must perform well, or he may lose the team. A balloon payment of $3 million is due in two months to Great Western Bank, and Buss doesn't have the money for this. What it does have, however, is a great basketball team that is adding the number one pick in the draft, Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson is joining the best player in the league, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, along with a solid mix of veterans. NBA legend Jerry West is coaching the team. That is until West quits right before training camp, but hangs around as a kind of unpaid consultant because he's obsessed with basketball. With the team in need of a new head coach, they initially try to get Jerry Tarkanian to sign on with them by making him the highest paid coach in the NBA. One small problem being that Tarkanian is attached to the mob in Las Vegas, and they aren't too happy with him leaving UNLV, so they kill his friend to send a message, allegedly. With Tarkanian out of the running, the Lakers turn their attention to Jack McKinney to fill the coaching vacancy. McKinney has always been an assistant coach in the NBA, but is considered by some to be a basketball savant. Buss initially doesn't like this idea because he views McKinney as a nobody. The training camp is right around the corner, and he has to pick somebody. McKinney accepts the job, and he wants to implement a creative new offensive scheme, which will later be called Showtime. The traditional NBA offense at the time worked through the post, and was slow, plotting, and predictable. McKinney, with the help of his assistant coach Paul Westhead, wants to implement an offense that's fast, dynamic, and operates organically, like water flowing downhill. There was a lot of pushback initially to McKinney's system until the team began winning games, and it was clear the system was working. After buying the team, Jerry Buss brought in a number of his family members to help him run it. His daughter Jeannie drops out of college to help Claire Rothman, who was in charge of filling the arena and promoting the team. Rothman and Jeannie come up with the concept of the Laker girls, and the idea of having a nightclub called the Forum Club in the stadium. Bus, a prolific womanizer, the binder full of women. Folks, and they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. Loves these ideas. Bus also brings his mother, Jesse Bus, into the operation as the team's bookkeeper. His mother proposes transferring the team to Jerry Bus's ex wife to keep the balloon payment in his name. That way, he can threaten Great Western Bank with bankruptcy without having to risk losing the team. The only problem with the plan is Jesse has cancer, and she's starting to lose her grip on reality. This causes her to forget to submit the transfer of ownership paperwork. Bus is still, however, able to negotiate a loan extension to June for the 30% fig. At this point, the Lakers need to win the title, or Bus isn't going to be able to pay off the $3 million owed plus a million dollars in interest. Kareem and Magic's relationship initially gets off to a rocky start, because Kareem doesn't see Magic as a serious person. But you are not serious people. Kareem is driven to use his status and fame to bring attention to the systematic racism within American society. And he doesn't like how happy and carefree Magic is. We learn that Magic isn't always carefree. Like Jerry Buss, Magic is a womanizer in his own right. And that has caused his relationship with Cookie Keeley to deteriorate. It's clear Magic sees Cookie as someone he'd like to marry, but she isn't able to trust him just yet because of his multiple indiscretions. After the team acquires Spencer Hayward, at least the basketball is going well even if things around the team are tenuous. This is until Jack McKinney has a serious accident on his bicycle, and he suffers brain damage. McKinney is in a coma for an extended period, and when he wakes up, he clearly isn't himself. Paul Westhead is tasked with taking over the team, but he really isn't up to the job. Even he considers himself a lifelong assistant and not a head coach. So Westhead brings in Pat Riley to help him coach the team because he's unable to do it himself. After settling in, Westhead and Riley lead the team to a long winning streak and the team is playing well going into the All-Star game. This is when McKinney makes his intentions known that he wants to come back to the team and coach it when the doctor says up to it. Jack wants Paul to fire Riley when he does come back, which is a problem because Paul told Riley that he'd have a position even when Jack returned. And Riley had to give up his announcer job to take the assistant coach position in the first place. So Riley convinces Paul that they should finish coaching the team for the rest of the season rather than let Jack take over because that's what would be best for the team. Jerry Buss now has to decide who he wants to pick as his head coach. So Jerry goes and visits Jack at his home to discuss it with him. And Jack doesn't recognize him when he greets him at the door. So Jerry decides to go with Riley and Paul to finish out the season. Jeannie Buss has been an intern of sorts at the Lakers, and Jerry doesn't really see her as a real employee. He wants her to take care of her grandmother instead of accepting Miss Rothman's offer to be a full-time employee on the team. It's now eight days until the playoffs, and Hayward has had a drug problem in the past and he relapses. And the players vote him off the team because they think he's doing more harm than good. At this point, Jesse Buss dies after suffering a hemorrhagic stroke, and Jerry asks Jeannie to clean up her apartment and take care of things because he says he can't do it. Fast forward to the NBA Finals and the Lakers are playing the Sixers. The series is tied 2-2 
and Kareem badly sprains his ankle. He stays in the game and dominates, helping the Lakers go up 3-2 in the series, but it comes at a price. Kareem is not able to play the following game, so Magic offers to play center, given the Lakers' lack of depth in the front court. In Game 6, Magic is on fire, doing everything on the floor, but the effort is taking a toll on him later in the game, and he's exhausted in the fourth quarter. Magic is too exhausted to play it effectively, so Riley tells him what the Rookie of the Year vote was. He pulls Magic aside and tells him that Bird won the Rookie of the Year vote 63-3, and that gives Magic the necessary motivation to finish the game strong. The Lakers end up winning the title, and Kareem was supposed to get the MVP, but David Stern, the deputy commissioner, decides it would be better for marketing if Magic wins the finals MVP. That way, the rivalry between him and Bird can start to build. Jerry Buss was able to pay the balloon payment and get a fresh line of credit after the Lakers' fantastic season. In one of the last scenes of the first season, Jerry Buss tells Claire Rothman that she has been promoted to treasurer and vice president of the team because she did such a good job. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.